G'day and welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me. I have a different type of video for you today. It's been about 12 months since I um, started this uh, YouTube channel, so yeah, June 2022 when I first posted one. Um, so I thought it might be a good idea to invite you all to come, come in with me and have a look behind the curtains and uh, see what it's like to start a YouTube channel from scratch when you have you know, absolutely no idea what you're doing or indeed why you're even doing it. It's been quite a journey and I've learned heaps over the last 12 months. I've had a few good wins along the way, which you might find interesting, but I've also had plenty of stuff ups too, which I'll share for a bit of a laugh. And I'll also show you some of the YouTube data so you can get a bit of a feel for what it's like to have a new channel and how that all plays out in the numbers and what it's like if you don't have your own channel and you don't get to see all that stuff. This video might be a bit long, judging by all of the, you know, the notes that I've made. So I'll put some markers in the description so you can jump around if you like, but hopefully you'll stick around for the whole thing. Should be good fun. Before I dive in though, I'd like to acknowledge that here in Australia, we are on Aboriginal land that was never ceded. For me here in Canberra, that's Ngunnawal country. I pay my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people everywhere, and I especially acknowledge any First Nations people who may be watching. Okay, first of all, a bit about my channel and why I started it. I'm the sort of guy that gets really antsy if they sit around and do nothing all day. Even when I'm on holidays relaxing, I'm more inclined to, you know, want to go for a walk or explore some city or town than sit around and read a book. You know, why read about someone else's adventures when you can go out and have your own, right? And what's more, I love being outside. Hiking, camping, you know, just being in nature, talking to birds and animals, that sort of stuff. It recharges me and keeps me grounded. So I guess it makes sense that if I was going to start a YouTube channel that it'd be you know, about my adventures when I'm out and about. But that's the thing. I never intended to start a YouTube channel. I just sort of fell ass back into it. One of my kids was you know, getting into video production at school and a couple of years ago, I bought him some gear to help him you know, with his studies, not really thinking too much about it. And then one day I was just fiddling around with Final Cut, playing with some old videos I'd taken and I found I really enjoyed it, learning something new. It was during COVID and things were pretty, you know, I don't know, routine at work, I guess. So it was a good way to keep the brain active and do something creative. So I got stuck in. I started watching online tutorials and learning more about it. Then one day when I was out for a walk in Jerobombra wetlands, I thought I'd film some birds and see how they came up when I worked my magic in Final Cut. The footage sucked, but I was kind of hooked on the concept of, you know, turning raw, shaky, dull footage into something that's not quite as crappy. So I tried again and again. And eventually, I pulled together something I thought was kind of okay. A journal of a camping trip that I did out to Mount Clear in autumn last year. So I posted it, 11th of April 2022. And it sucked as well. So I took it down and reworked it. And then on June 6, I reposted it. Better, but not perfect by any stretch. But it's still there, and it's my second most watched video. So I'm really quite proud of it. Check it out sometime. So basically, that's how it all started. I just figured that YouTube might be a good way to you know, keep a video journal without clogging up my hard drive. I never expected anyone to watch, but I didn't really care if they did. It really was just for me. So not surprisingly, nothing happened. I didn't expect it to either. I didn't tell anyone about it. And to be honest, I'm really not that keen on being on camera in front of people I know. We're trying to be a YouTuber. That's never been the goal. I'm not exactly David Attenborough when it comes to talking about wildlife, and I don't exactly have that Morgan Freeman voiceover thing going on, but I do enjoy the process. So basically, I just married up two things that I enjoy doing, and here we are. Okay, let me quickly tell you about the gear I use. In a nutshell, it's what I have at hand. So basically, it's shit. I work for a charity, have done my whole life, so I'm not exactly Scrooge McDuck. I film everything on my iPhone, it's an iPhone 12 Pro Max, which was you know, pretty good three years ago, I guess, but it's missing some of the bells and whistles that the new phones have. I have a couple of tripods, which I bought on Amazon, 20, 30 bucks each, nothing flash. I do use a Rode Video Micro, I think it's called, probably the most lavish expense I've made. It cost me maybe, I don't know, 80, 90 bucks, but it has one of those fuzzy things which helps cut down the wind noise when you're you know, filming outside. It's been okay, but not perfect. And finally, I have a clip-on car mount thing that I also bought on Amazon to record when I'm driving along. And that's really about it for recording footage. For editing, I use a MacBook Pro, which is pretty specced out, but that's more for work. I use Final Cut Pro to do the editing. 
I use it pretty much off the shelf, but I did buy a couple of LUTs for like, you know, 20 bucks when I realized I was absolutely useless at color grading. I also use Keynote for some of the animations and Pixel Made a Pro for the thumbnails. That's it. I don't really profess to know what I'm doing, nor do I see or hear that minute detail in video production that true professionals obviously do, that separates good videos from bad. But as a total Gumby, I don't reckon it's too bad. Okay, let's talk about how the year played out. Keeping in mind, of course, that I started from scratch. No idea what I was doing, no plan or desire to build or grow a public channel, and no history on YouTube or previous follows or other social media to promote for it. Nothing. First of all, here is a graph of the views since I kicked off. As you can see, nothing happened for a long while. I posted the first couple of videos in June, and there was a handful of views every now and then. And truth be known, they were probably mostly me. 6th of July, big day, 6 views. Now, if you don't have a channel and you don't get to see these graphs usually, you can see along the bottom when I posted videos and how many I posted during that week. By mid-August, I'd posted 10 videos, and without really doing anything, I was getting 10 to 15 views a day. Late August through September, which is spring here, so I was able to get out a bit more and record a bit more, I was getting a couple of hundred videos on some days. Pretty cool, but mostly it was around the 15 to 20. That trend sort of continued for much of the rest of the year. A few good days here and there, but mostly quiet periods. Still, I was not really interested in getting views at this stage. In fact, I was a little bit baffled by it. Then on 27th of December, I had my first spike. 1,286 views in one day. Don't get excited though. It was one of those video shorts of an osprey I filmed when I was up in Foster, and the views dried up the next day. But still, pretty cool. Then things settled down for the next month or so, but something was simmering just below the surface. On the 30th of October, I'd posted a video about how to tie a bowline knot. It was ticking along nicely, getting a fair few views. And then, for some reason, in February, it kind of just took off. And by early March, it had like 18,000 views, 500 watch hours, and it delivered me 130 or so subscribers. Yeah, it doesn't sound like much compared to a lot of the other channels, but I was completely amazed by this. And it was around then that I thought, hmm, what happens if I put some thought into this? Maybe it'll go somewhere. But as I'm really starting to realize with YouTube, the YouTube gods giveth and they taketh away just as quick. And that bowline video has only been getting a handful of views each day since. YouTube really does make sure you don't get your hopes up too high. It's a bit like being a Saints fan. NRL or NFL? Take your pick, they're both a hard gig. And then something else happened around this time as well. I got a new job, and that sort of bit into my time a little bit. I do all this on the weekends and in the evening, but with a new job it meant I had to cut back a little. Especially on the camping trips, which are super fun, but take a lot of time and effort even when I don't film. Despite all that though, I've been continuing to post new videos every week or two, trying different things, trying different styles of videos like this one, and testing out different types of editing techniques, trying to get a little bit better each day. And so far this year, here are the numbers. 58 videos posted, 48 proper videos and 10 shorts, 53,000 views, 2200 viewing hours, and 480 odd subscribers. I'm completely blown away by this. Like I said, I don't promote this channel at all. I have never told a single person about it. So for what it's worth, it's 100% YouTube organic growth. Maybe there's something in that for people to take away, and if that's you, I hope you find it useful or even encouraging. Okay, so what are some of the things I've found work well for me? And by me, I mean someone who has an outdoors camping sort of channel, I guess. First of all, the how-to style of videos seem to do the best. The few videos I did showing the tricks I used to tie certain knots did pretty well, the bowline one in particular, but I did a couple of others and they got good views as well, and continue to do so. One of them is even blurry in parts. I also find that overnight camping videos tend to do better than the one day hike style videos. Not sure if there's anything in that, but that's what I see in the data. And it's also pretty clear that people prefer videos set in the bush rather than videos when I'm out and about in towns or cities. So they're the things that I found work well for me, but what about the things that didn't work so well? Well, first of all, shorts. They don't seem to get as much traction for this sort of channel. Well, for me at least, they're a bit hit and miss. Even that Osprey one that I mentioned only had a two hour period where the YouTube was running it up the flagpole. 
I also did a staycation video once a couple of months back showcasing one of the most expensive hotels in Sydney. It was a bloody great trip and I thought it was a really cool video, but it didn't resonate at all. I also did a video of a week I had wandering around Sydney in the rain. It tanked, my worst upload. Seriously, not good, what was I thinking? Who wants to look at a wet, dreary version of Sydney, yeah? But the thing that disappoints me the most is videos focusing on animals and birds don't tend to do as well either. Which kind of sucks, because you know, they're my favourite types to make. Aussie wildlife is the best, so I'll continue to post them, even if they don't get very many views. If people don't like wombats, that's on them, I reckon. Okay, so where to from here? As I mentioned, I never started this channel to make money. I didn't even know that that was a thing for small channels, to be honest. It was basically just a hobby, and I certainly never thought that after a year or so that I'd have 500 or so people following the channel. It seems to be getting a bit of traction, which is crazy when I stop and reflect on it all. So it kind of got me thinking. It might be good to see if I can get this channel to a place where I could start getting some ad revenue. I had a look, and you need 1,000 followers and 4,000 hours of watch time in a year. So I'm still a long way off, but I'm about halfway there. So I figure it might be a good goal for the next year to try and hit those targets. Not because I actually want to make money, far from it in fact. I donate money every year to charities. So I figure anything I can make passively on YouTube, doing something that I enjoy doing, can just be donated to some worthy causes. So that's the plan. So if you've stuck with me this far and you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. It won't cost you anything, and it might just help me get this channel to a point where the YouTube overlords are sending me a few shekels every now and then, and I can pay it forward and make the world a little bit better. Everyone wins, I reckon. Hard to complain about that. Okay, I think that's enough of me banging on about my channel for the time being. A big shout out to the 500 or so people who have taken the time to subscribe. And yeah, especially thanks to those people who have taken time to comment or give me some encouraging feedback. I really appreciate you all. Thank you. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, there's one shitty thing you have to deal with when you post videos people can comment on. I did receive my first arsehole bigot commenting on one of my videos. Some racist numbnuts that I won't mention by name, but I did get a lot of satisfaction reporting him for hate speech. Okay, I'm done for real this time. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this little reflection, and until next time, stay safe.